Yeah, we are all good. We are waiting for some more participants. Uh, and you could wait for a minute or two. Are there states also participating? No. They will not be seen by us, sir. Okay. They are in the listening mode. Okay. And just before, okay, we can start now, yeah. Good afternoon to everyone, including my esteemed panelists. My name is Dr. Praveen Gera, I am Additional Chief Executive Officer of Health and Technology. And we implement uh, two flagship schemes of Government of India, ABP and JY, and uh, the National Digital Health Mission. I have with me uh, the eminent uh, panelists. We have Sri Manoj Jalani, Sri Rajiv Sarvanandan, Sri Vikash Ji, and Dr. Jagat Ram. Dr. Rakesh Sarwal will be also joining us in a while. It gives me immense pleasure to begin this technical session number two on strengthening public health care, leveraging ABPM Deva. Today, we are looking forward to fruitful and engaging session which, uh, with this eminent panel. Yesterday on 27th, uh, 23rd December, uh, September 2021, uh, the NHA and Ayushman Bharat family celebrated third anniversary of ABPM Devai, which was launched in 2018. And this is one of the uh, series, uh, sessions in the series of sessions in this Aroke Mantra. So I would like to set the context by giving some facts and figures before we hear our eminent panelists. As we may be aware, you may be aware, we have around 24,000 hospitals implementing this important scheme, uh, Pradhan Mantri Jana Harukya Yojana. And if we see the figures, we will note that there are more public sector hospitals than private hospitals. But when it comes to uh, the expenditure per episode and overall revenue generated out of this, uh, and also the number of hospital admissions, public sector is not faring as good as the private sector and there are several reasons for this. We will discuss this during the course of this session. Uh, initially, at the start of the scheme, public uh, admissions, uh, public share, uh, share of admissions in the public hospital was around 40 degrees, which went on increasing, but post-COVID, it has again come down to 40%. Uh, percent. And private hospitals are uh, currently having almost 60% of hospital admissions. When it comes to uh, revenue or uh, value of these treatments, the situation is even worse for public hospitals. Only one third throughout India, almost uh, one third of the revenue that is going to all the hospitals, it is going to public. And rest of it is going to private hospitals, meaning thereby that they are not only doing more number of uh, cases, but they are doing cases with high value. So to strengthen and to encourage public hospitals under the PMJY, the NHA has taken several initiatives. One, the empanelment of public hospital is much easier. The criteria eased off. Uh, many treatment packages have been reserved for government hospitals by several states. Some states have made referral compulsory either for all the packages or for some packages. Uh, public hospitals load has also come down because a lot of patients are going to know private sector also. In claims also certain uh, advan uh, there are certain advantages which public hospitals can claim. One is auto approval uh, or the pre-authorization is much easier. The claim reimbursement is at par with the private hospital, notwithstanding the fact that public hospitals also receive uh, direct budgetary support from governments. And this enables untied funds at the uh, disposal of uh, administrators like medical superintendents and deans. 
uh, we are also giving additional uh, incentive to those hospitals where uh, which has a medical college as well but in spite of these uh, numerous uh, advantages uh, the re there are certain reasons why the uptake in the public hospitals is low one can see that the ownership is not there in uh, many of such hospitals uh, there is actually no incentive for a doctor to get this per, uh, these patients booked under the pmjy and of course we all know that the public hospitals are overburdened in our country uh, at times uh, there is lack of infrastructure mm -hmm. like hardware and internet connectivity etc uh, there is a shortage of doctors the dedicated it staff may not be there and uh, so uh, beneficiaries themselves also don't want to exhaust their wallet for which they feel is a free service otherwise in a public hospital and all these things come together and uh, we are witnessing the fact that uh, they are not able to make as much money as the private counterparts uh, there are certain reasons why public hospitals are also not using the money which they are already earning and uh, we have witnessed this uh, in numerous hospitals where at times crores of rupees were pending unutilized well we have issued guidelines at the level of nha for utilization of funds but they some of these hospitals want additional set of guidelines from their immediate management government that is the state government then uh, as we all know uh, at times there is a, a concern about uh, doing bona fide work some fear of audit or pre seal as we all know then there is lack of ownership and uh, so all these things come together and uh, we are not in a position to utilize the funds which have been released to public hospitals we also witnessed uh, a peculiar phenomena in few states where the funds which were released to public hospitals were clawed back by the state governments so therefore nha put a cap of 20% of such clawing back practices and we say that minimum 80% of the revenue which is going from uh, uh, which is going from nha and sha to hospitals actually is spent at the level of hospital only several states have taken several initiatives to ensure that uh, the uptake of pmjy in public hospitals increase some states uh, such as karnataka they are uh, and uh, assam they are giving incentive to their medical teams There are separate wards in states like Uttar Pradesh. There are incentives to ASHA in Jharkhand, and so on, so forth. There is also an opportunity to leverage the private sector, uh, so that uh, so that uh, public sector can effectively uh, deliver. it can consider ppp models for claim management certain procedures such as dialysis for satellite clinics for telemedicine so on so forth we have also uh, taken a unique initiative uh, based on the experience of some of the hospitals and states uh, we have now empowered seven beneficiary facilitation agencies which will help uh, hospitals including public hospitals to maximize the cases which are getting admitted there to be converted into pmjy and also to enable and to facilitate the quality of claim processing and this is likely to uh, be a game changer as far as increasing the revenue approved to a public hospital is concerned the states are at liberty to get financial bids from any of these seven or they can go beyond even these seven players so this is a very recent initiative which we have uh, started going forward uh, i feel a strengthening of public health facilities should be given uh, a priority in pmjy beneficiary facilitation agency extensive ipc liberalized claim adjudications will help in this particular process with that i i i uh, stop and i now uh, go to our esteemed panelists uh, i welcome them all of all of them once again firstly i would like to welcome shri manoj jhalani as the chair of the session he is an is officer of 1987 batch of mp kader 
and is currently director health systems and life course in the southeast asia regional office of the world health organization previously he has served as joint secretary policy and later as md nhm and then additional secretary and then special secretary to the government of india i now request to sri jhalani to uh, give his chair person's address over to you sir uh thanks thanks praveen and uh, thanks nha for organizing this uh, annual manthan and uh, the brainstorming sessions i think it's very useful uh, am i am i logic am i clear yeah so these are pretty useful in terms of taking stock of how well we are doing what is working well what is working not so well and how we could continue to improve our performance uh yes i was involved in drafting the cabinet note for approval of ayushman bharat with the twin interrelated pillars of comprehensive primary health care through health and wellness centers and the free inpatient care uh, for disadvantaged sections under the pmjy uh now we know why pmjy is introduced uh, we know that um, we have one of the highest out of pocket spending and uh, within those who were hospitalized as per the nss of so 2014 15 27% of those hospitalized had to sell their assets or borrow money uh two we realized that public sector didn't have the capacities to cater to all the inpatient needs and lastly we felt that patients needed to be empowered by allowing them choice so that uh, and uh, as the money would follow the patient uh it's so nice to know that um, all the systems related to pmjy i mean initially we were busy developing all the systems it infrastructure for registration enrollment abandonment claim processing etc so all of them are in place they have all stabilized and uh, now today we are discussing about strengthening public health care leveraging ayushman bharat pmjy i was looking at the data that you shared uh, this year we uh, shared about 325 crores so far with the public facilities and i also realized could have been much higher close to about 1000 crores if um, most of these resources were utilized by the public health facilities now the first question is should we be concerned about low share of public health facilities i mean why are we wanting that public facility should get a larger share after all uh, we are left it to the patients and patients are making their choices and patients are empowered and money will follow the patients but we realize that it is indeed good that higher proportion of benefits go to the public health facilities uh, we would want that more public money goes to the public hospitals to strengthen public hospitals we just looked at the data so we realize that the average payout is a bit less i think it's overall good for the nhas governments shas etc it's good for the insurance company uh, and also means that uh, more limit then is available with the patients for treatment fam patients family uh, we also recognize that the moral hazards are much less i mean there is a much less incentive to defraud uh, more importantly public hospitals have significant externalities beyond the pmjy i mean they render a whole gamut of public health services we looked at uh, how public hospitals had to rise to the occasion to provide uh, covid services and they also support public health programs so if the public health facilities are strengthened they not only are good for the pmjy beneficiaries they are good for the overall health systems and for the overall uh, public health programs uh you pointed out yeah these are remarkable uh, there's a remarkable flexibility i drafted the rks guidelines the rks guidelines are also uh, remarkably flexible uh but of course i do recognize that in some states the rk systems are fairly well entrenched understood and their flexibility is utilized while there could be hospitals uh, and states where people are hesitant to use all the rks flexibility uh, other benefit is that this enhances uh, better record keeping better accountability um, in some sense better quality you would because you are creating a trail so rational prescriptions rational investigations etc uh i mean at least on paper as you pointed out so for the public hospitals the government has already paid for the infrastructure they pay for the equipment hrs drugs diagnostics etc so 
with this additional pmjy money these people i mean the public sector should be able to offer much superior quality services as compared to the private sector because they have to recover the entire cost through through the patients only so i mean uh, they have to recover the cost of hrh and infrastructure and drugs etc uh we realize that uh, this would i mean uh, this gives an opportunity to for hospitals to earn that extra flexible money also gives an opportunity for the hospital staff they could in case the incentives are provided to the hospital staff uh we also feel that public hospitals should now start treating the disadvantaged groups much better because they are also bringing more money to the hospital so it's i mean uh we also recognize that the forward and backward linkages which is a you know an area which is which we are grappling with i mean the nhm or primary care and secondary tertiary care are not integrated the care continuum is not there uh, if they go to the public health facilities the chances of this integration and care continuum should be better and the follow up by the prime uh, by the primary health care facilities post discharge should be better uh, so i mean both the two way i mean the referral as well as the follow up and i think it should also generate uh, it should help in generating healthy competition i mean of course it needs to be uh, the ownership needs to be created as praveen pointed out now if we feel that it's important to for public health facilities utilization to improve what is it that we should do and how should we do about, how should we go about it now of course the goal should be overall improved uh, health systems and uh, better services for the pmjy beneficiaries i think it's important uh, for uh, the government for the nha for the nhm for the shs to first try to identify the factors that are determining the choice of health facility why are beneficiaries wanting or not wanting to use the public facility uh, so we need to survey that if there's nothing else i mean the simplest could be doing a tele survey we have the data of the beneficiaries who visit our health facilities we also often have their we have their mobile numbers as well we could organize a tele survey and try to understand uh, why i mean let's from the demand side why patients are choosing to go to public facilities or private facilities or why not and uh, based on that feedback then we should address those reasons uh, so as to be able to make the public health facilities more attractive i mean i remember uh, one long time study long uh, some old study which said that the rude behavior i mean that time pmj was was not there but why were still patients preferring to go to uh, private sector although i noticed that since nhm i mean earlier 20% uh, people used to be going to uh, public facilities that percentage has gone up to about 30% now in the last nss so uh but uh, one of the reasons that came out the prominent the first, number one reason was the rude behavior on the part of public health facility provider so anyway we need to look at what needs to be done uh, to address uh, why public health facilities are not so attractive as i said there's every reason for uh, them to be more attractive compared to the private hospitals i was also looking at the data and i think this is where uh, we we need to really do more triangulation so i mean i saw the last two years data the number of beneficiaries about 50 lakhs uh, under the pmjy which is only about 1% of the beneficiary population now i would normally i mean we all expected even as per the nsso that the proportion of uh, num- the number of people who should have been seeking pmjy benefits uh, sh- is expected to be much higher than what it is i'm not saying people should be more, getting more sick and uh, but uh, uh, the evidence of people seeking hospital care and uh, f- from the population that are beneficiaries of pmjy i think 50 lakhs is rather on the lower side uh, i was also looking at the hmis data i just asked uh, the ddg and he said in the year 29 20 there were nearly 6.88 crore uh, beneficiaries in patients in the dh sdh and the chcs so 6.88 crores is what he is saying is the number of uh, those hospitalized in 1920 and it was uh, less slightly less than 5 crores in the year 2021 uh, maybe covid had a role to play there now i am sure a major part of these people getting hospitalized in the 
public health facilities would be from the disadvantaged category. I mean, there could be cases from MCH conditions which may not be under PMJY and all, but we need to at least look at the data and see uh, which are those district hospitals that are reporting large number of inpatients and then look at the data uh, of the PMJY beneficiaries from those hospitals. And if there's a big gap between hospitals reporting large number of inpatients under HMIS and reporting much lower number of cases under PMJY, we need to look at as to what could be a potential reason as to why they are not being recorded as PMJY beneficiary. Maybe if their services are really good, say in Tamil Nadu, uh, if I am a beneficiary, I may not even want to report that I am a PMJY beneficiary because I am anyway getting a free care. If the systems are good, why should you want to declare that you are a PMJY beneficiary? The beneficiary may not be interested. The hospitals, for variety of reasons, I'm surprised. I mean, the lack of ownership. I'm I mean, I'm just wondering as to why. I mean, every one hospital would want more money to flow into the Rogi Kalyan Samiti. And if there are incentives, then there is every reason for staff to be more interested in getting people. I mean, they would like to identify PMJY beneficiaries and they'll also be keen to submit the claims. But uh, so is it because uh, patients are not declaring that they are PMJY beneficiaries or the hospitals are, I mean, because of lack of ownership are not really submitting the PMJY claims, even for those who could be PMJY beneficiaries and for whom they could really claim, uh, claim money from, from the state health agency. Uh, we also need to have, I mean, I, I would suggest that we should have meetings with the facility in charge and share the benefits of claiming PMJY beneficiaries and then understand from them what are the bottlenecks. And I mean, so it would be good to even have a survey or feedback from hospital facility in charges, trying to know uh, how far they see the benefit from PMJY and the challenges they face in making full use of the uh, uh, money that could come from PMJY. Uh, I was looking at uh, the data in terms of uh, uh, states that are providing uh, they are providing incentives to the health staff and those states that are not providing incentives to the health staff. I did not find any positive, I did not find a positive correlation between, uh, I thought that states that are providing incentives to the staff, probably, I mean, uh, their uh, staff must be providing better care, must be keen to attract more PMJY beneficiaries and must be raising more claims. But surprisingly, that does not seem to be the case. Of course, one has to go individually. I mean, Arunachal may be having 100% because there's no private sector there. I mean, so, but we, we need to we need to be looking at the data more critically and seeing, uh, uh, I mean, I, I normally, that was my presumption is that we should pay the incentives to the health staff so that they have a keen interest to provide a high quality care so that more and more PMJY beneficiaries should want to visit the hospitals and they will then get money for the hospital as well as for themselves. And overall, it should work well. Uh, so more money to the hospital, more money to the providers, more beneficiaries coming to the public facilities, overall that getting strengthened. But uh, I looked at the data as of, I mean, in a macro level, there does not seem to be a positive correlation. But there is also, I mean, the the I would, while I still might advocate for providing incentives to the health staff, I also would like to warn of the dangers of cream skimming and also neglecting uh, parts of health system that do not bring you the PMJY benefit. So if the MCH care, I mean, if uh, is free and there's no benefits coming to the staff uh, providers, then, uh, you know, uh, the staff nurses may want to be posted in that ward where uh, there are more PMJY beneficiaries and where they might get more incentives. Uh, or you may be having a scenario where those patients which are not bringing revenues may be neglected. Uh, so we, we need to be uh, looking at uh, the downsides, but if we are addressing the downsides well, I think uh, we could think of providing incentives uh, to the staff teams. However, whenever we do that, state should carefully craft those model guidelines of uh, what percentage of uh, money should go as incentive and how it should be shared amongst the team members. Uh, I would also uh, suggest, I mean, the initial uh, guidelines, the cabinet note does provide that theoretically public facilities can create a scenario where they charge for the same procedure, they can charge a lower rate than uh, the public, than the private sector. Now, what would be the benefit of it? So, I mean, 
at least on paper, uh, of course, they have to be communicated well, is that uh, the beneficiary gets the same service, the same procedure done at a much lower cost. So they save uh, their overall uh, ceiling, I mean, uh, is there. Uh, it's beneficial for NHA, SHA, because for the procedure, the cost is lower for them. If there are more patients, as a result of this coming to the public health facilities, the public health facilities overall revenue does not really go down. So, so maybe it could be a win-win situation and uh, there is every rationale as to why public health facilities should charge less for the same procedure because as we said, their infrastructure, HR, medicines, diagnostics is largely free. Uh, I think one of the reasons, and you did point out in terms of BFA, et cetera, because uh, maybe the IT infrastructure, maybe the claim management skills uh, may not be there in the hospital and that could be supported too, so that they are able to make the money. I just had a few other suggestions. We should try to use this Mera Aspatal application. I mean, we did create that and provide ranking of hospitals based on patient satisfaction. It's a fairly simple uh, thing. It's not very, uh, uh, not very uh, highly refined and developed, but at least somewhere you are looking, uh, trying to empowering the citizen and then trying to provide the uh, hospital ranking based on the feedback provided by the patient. So, I mean, creating a nudge for quality of care. Uh, the other thing could be that uh, in the district hospital ranking, you know, we know that Niti Ayog started coming with district hospital rankings, uh, could we have uh, one of the criteria as number of PMJY beneficiaries could also have a small weightage in district hospital ranking. So maybe that will create a nudge for them to try to get more PMJY beneficiaries. Uh, also, I think we should try to leverage strength of each other. I mean, I, I certainly feel, and this was one of the things which I had talked to Kiran earlier and Vikas Shil is there and I would request Vikas to sincerely think and uh, get down to facilitate. Can we use this payment platform that's been created by NHA? Can we transfer the funds, say beginning with the JSSK beneficiaries to our district hospitals and SDH hospitals? And uh, so we provide a responsive allocation to the hospitals. It's an NHA money, all right. It is a JSSK money, all right. But uh, we, we create, I mean, we use this platform and it will really improve our JSSK delivery. It will provide for responsive allocation. And then we could again provide similar benefits to the beneficiaries receiving the NHM money. Some money could go as incentives to the staff. I mean, even if you provide normal delivery, 500 rupees or uh, C-section, even 1500 per case, because largely all these uh, delivery care is with the NHM but use the platform and provide the money directly to the facilities. Uh, the SHA could draw the money from State Health Society, provides the kitty and it flows through that channel. And you have a good system in every way. So, uh, and I mean, it could be then for cataract operations, could be for our family planning, RBSK, et cetera. So we should try to use the NHA created infrastructure to strengthen NHM in terms of flowing money for both inpatient care. And I would suggest even for, I mean, use that platform for transferring, making its responsive allocation, even for OPD, maybe 10 rupees per case for OPD. And that will improve quality of data, make responsive allocations, and you'll just improve, uh, create much richer information and evidence. Uh, lastly, I think we should also try to leverage uh, the data that's being created for I mean, for AI, for big data analytics, and I think uh, for research. Um, and uh, so, so we try to leverage uh, the PMJY for much greater benefit for the society as a whole. So to conclude, uh, I say PMJY is a great scheme and it should be leveraged to uh, strengthen uh, broader health systems and services. Thank you. Over to you, Praveen. Thank you very much, sir, for those uh, interesting comments. In fact, you discussed both the sides, uh, both pros and cons of uh, aspects like do we actually need to utilize uh, PMJY in public hospitals and the way forward, the way it can be done. Thank you very much, sir. I now welcome Sri Rajiv Sadanandan to present the inaugural address for the session. Shri Sadanandan is the founding CEO of Health System Transformation Platform. Prior to taking up this assignment, he has been a career civil servant with specialization and extensive experience in health systems and health finance. I request him to deliver the inaugural address. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Praveen. 
Um, I'll, I'll start sharing my screen. Uh, this topic is of great interest to me uh, as someone who was, uh, uh, who used to head the predecessor of PMGY as uh, that's uh, 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 RSBY and also as the owner of the public hospitals and uh, the manager, the manager of the public hospitals in Kerala that benefit from it. So this is of, uh, of uh, uh, great interest to me. Uh, I think I'm having a problem with this. Are my slides moving? Praveen, are my not slides moving? Mo they are not moving. I mean, you're still on the first slide. Okay. Not moving, sir. Okay. So let me stop share. And uh, may I now request uh, the... Let me try again. Let me try again. Okay. This, maybe this is better. Yeah. So what this is the uh, general layout of my presentation. Unlike the two preceding speakers who had uh, who had uh, uh, looked at the entire gamut of things, I am looking at it from the uh, from the uh, public hospitals alone. So, wait, what? Just click the button. Yeah. So uh, uh, the uh, <clears throat> I'm looking at it from the from the public hospitals alone. So what is the reason for this, uh, 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 why this topic should interest us? If public hospitals have improved, what is that we need to do? What's the benefit for it? And I'll also discuss some issues that need clarification. And lastly, if you have time, I'll also go to, what do we need to strengthen uh, government hospitals? Because there is, a, there, is a, there is a body of opinion that seems to, uh, that seems to suggest that uh, this doesn't work. Okay, now, um, I'll try if it doesn't work again, then that is it. Okay, uh, it doesn't seem to work. So I think I'll, I'll just skip this presentation or maybe the, uh, the, the organizers can please put up my presentation. Is that possible? Uh, so I'll just I'll, I'll proceed with what I what what I had intended to do, which was why is it that that next slide please, why is it that this is important? Is this important when you look at uh, when you look at next slide when you look at uh, 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 public hospitals? Remember, government health sector, including hospitals, uh, we all know are underfed and un un underfunded. The reason that private sector had to step in was to uh, or had to step in to meet the demand supply uh, gap was because government hospitals were underfunded now today most states have more private hospitals than government hospitals now from the whether it was rsby or pmjy the insur the government funded insurance scheme had to use uh, the private hospitals if they had to ensure services for them but if the resources from government uh, budget uh, which should should be paying for hospitals is also used to pay private hospitals then the total amount that is available for private hospitals goes down and uh, and uh, uh, which means their their uh, uh, their total allocations will actually come down there is no escaping this and government hospitals will have to uh, compete for funds and this turned this into an opportunity for improvement in fact, as both my speakers mentioned, both the speakers mentioned, they do have an advantage over private hospitals because while the private hospitals had to pay for their capital budget and for the revenue expenditure, the uh, they have the they have the freedom to use this money as a surplus. Next slide, please. But they also have some serious disadvantages. As many of us who have worked in government know, governments do not foster autonomy or entrepreneurial spirit. You know, uh, we have a we in, in government we keep saying that no good good initiative ever goes unpunished so so that is that so that that culture is is uh, is certainly not conducive to to this secondly managers for a hospital to do well managers have to be given the autonomy and we know that the bureaucratic structure in government does not give uh, uh, give uh, them the freedom to take investment and managing decisions 
Now, if we have to use finances derived from PMJY for improving hospitals, they need support for managing finances, procurement, recruitment, administration. Given the current staffing that is there in hospitals, they just cannot manage it. And, and, and uh, so, so it's highly, uh, uh, highly unrealistic to expect that given the present uh, uh, staffing, they'll be able to do it. Now, when we recruited our hospital managers, prepping up their hospitals to compete with private uh, uh, sector, we never told them that was their job description. And in most of the discussions that happens outside government, they are repeatedly told, you guys are inefficient, incompetent, high level of demoralization is there. Next one. Now, this is the environment in which we are to, uh, we, 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 we are trying to see if, uh, if uh, private hospitals, sorry, government hospitals can use more funding from PMJY and how they can use it efficiently. Some of my suggestions are, one, government has to that is the state governments have to have to have a policy recognizing that additional funding from pmjy is a necessary resource is a usable resource for managing and improving hospitals there's no point in saying that this is understood this has to be explicitly stated two if hospitals are to be managed uh, uh, by uh, and and if they have to take over this responsibility then we have to build a cadre of hospital managers who have been who have been trained and who have a clear prog uh, career progression. You start from the CHC, go on to uh, the subdivisional hospitals, district hospitals, and so on. So that has to be done. And thirdly, uh, and this is allowed by NHM, we have to convert any or any system within the government because we know that government hospitals on their own are not empowered to borrow money or spend money uh, the way a private hospital can do. One of the uh, uh, suggestions for doing this is to convert our case, the Rogigli and some of these, into a legally registered entities with the powers to borrow for investment or use this, uh, you know, this this money. Now, when you borrow, uh, because the problem will be that given the quality that is there in many hospitals, they may not be able to compete with the private sector, and we need to bring in resources. So, borrowing is one option. And, uh, uh, and government can underwrite this partially or fully, or you can create a, an escrow account by which the money that is earned from PMJV can be used to amortize, or uh, it can be used to use the running costs and also for debt uh, 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 servicing. Next slide, please. Why is this? Uh, and, and the other problem is, any hospital manager, I mean, currently hospital, uh, our service rules and office procedures do not have clear guidelines on how to uh, take decisions for, for, uh, uh, for uh, using PMJY funds. Now, unless we come up with uh, structures, that is, how will decisions get taken? How will the planning be done? Who will allocate resources? Who will decide on what to buy? How will it get audited? Unless these are there, they land in trouble. We have to safeguard them. But again, uh, the way we normally do in government, it's not happened in such a way that we hamper decision, uh, decision making. Secondly, we have to provide them with workforce, that is HR, to manage all these items. One of the problems that we had seen in, in, uh, in wherever we had gone in for alternate structures was due to lack of oversight, people have gotten into trouble. So while we are setting up the system, we also plan at the higher end on how to carry out the oversight functions. Next. Now, what are the benefits that uh, hospitals get in, uh, in, 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 in PMJY funding? Often we are told that the current mode of financing of government hospitals is not the right way to go. We have to move from budget line financing to demand side financing, etc., etc. But given the uh, current system with permanent staff, it's highly unlikely that we can even try demand side financing because they will continue to insist on budget uh, uh, line based finance. Now, in Kerala, when we uh, uh, about 5,000 crores are currently being invested to set up new facilities, there is no way government will be funding this uh, from, the, from the budget. They will have to be fund using demand side finance. The advantage is that if we, this offers us a chance of trying out what are the methods that need to be done to ensure that 
to ensure that we have demand side financing how do you how do you uh, budget for it how do you do your cost control how do you do your accounting etc and and also how do you ensure that you recover the money as uh, manoj mentioned in many cases hospital managers have little incentive to collect the money that is due to them and this will also create because if their whole uh, existence depends on the money that comes out of this they will certainly ensure that the money is collected now long term debt the concept of public uh, debt is that government borrows invest and then the uh, and, and 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 pays off the uh, debt from the returns generated by the investment this same thing can be tried for hospitals you can borrow invest and then using amount that is re realized from 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 uh, uh, from uh, pmjy that money can be paid for uh, those of us who have managed who looked at hospitals know that the current method of uh, uh, of uh, uh, financing is highly fragmented you have money that comes from nhm from budget uh, uh, treasury from uh, other css from local governments etc etc now uh, this uh, if if this offers us an opportunity with proper accounting support to start pooling this resource one of the uh, techniques that i used to use was was on on a on a on a matrix on your left side list out all that you want to be done for the for the for the hospital on the right side you have different columns uh, you have money from budget nhm etc etc look for the most restrictive budget source that is possible that that is there uh, generally it is nhm or other css money so what you do is whatever can go into this put it there go to the next next less restrictive one pocket there pocket there pocket there the advantage that pmjy gives is that it is the most flexible source of money where the decision remains with the with the uh, with the uh, hospital superintendent so that can be used to cover all the gaps that are left and that's a tremendous support for uh, integrated uh, financing and uh, 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 if government hospitals have to compete with uh, with uh, private hospitals uh, they have to compete on quality both technical quality and service quality manoj mentioned about the rudeness of behavior which actually is part of the service quality uh, for those of you who are interested in finding out why is it that people in your state prefer private over government in the national sample survey there's a question that is asked i mean did you choose government or did you choose private for those people who asked who asked uh, uh, private uh, they are, they are uh, told to uh, you know uh, they are told to uh, they they ask the reason and that generally gives a reason for it. next slide please i'll how am i doing for time have i uh, my timer is uh, pravin how am i doing for time sir uh, request to uh, maybe Tomorrow next now. couple of minutes or so yeah two minutes more okay because One... we are slightly running behind the schedule right, right. yes sir. okay thanks now uh, uh, there are there are there are policy level decisions that need to be taken i'll briefly touch upon that one is that how do we ensure equity between hospitals generally some hospitals are better endowed than others now if you apply this pmjy system they will contribute to attract more and further uh, add the inequity now state governments i would recommend have to devise an equalization mechanism so that you take some money from the well established hospitals and uh, 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 put it into uh, into hospital equalization fund and pravin mentioned the 20% that states are allowed to keep now special preference of pmg voices uh, pmg beneficiaries incentivizes beneficiaries to claim their entitlement and also enhances resources uh, incentives of hospital teams are good it increases ownership but i have seen that treatment decisions even when we were giving 25% uh, incentive the treatment decisions were uh, uh, were tilted skewed in favor of ip and more expensive treatment you have to guard against that and then uh, guidelines are helpful restrictive guidelines are helpful but you should have a, a bypass mechanism that can over it over uh, over power it and also what's a you'll find that hospital managers are not very keen on spending money uh, those hospital man because those who are risk covers now if you and a lot of money would be idling if you take this money and put into a common fold 
there is a danger of course there is a usefulness that the money will get spent but there's also a danger that will generally be used by the uh, by the good uh, hospitals next one please last slide now why are why is it that uh, private uh, hosp government hospitals are important one many countries decide to purchase from from private hospitals but problem in india is that many of us do not have the capacity for contracting and contract compliance secondly i have seen that when there are well functioning government hospitals they which function as a fallback mechanism for uh, patients uh, against private hospitals the market based competition from government hospitals are more efficient than poorly enforced regulation to control prices and quality in private hospitals and lastly covid showed I mean, this is something we had seen from the surat plague uh, in the 70s it showed that uh, 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 during health emergencies you need government hospitals to step up to shoulder the burden thank you thank you very much thank you very much uh, sir and these were really very interesting uh, insights the we certainly need to further build the capacities uh, at the government hospital level i now move on to the next speaker we have with us now uh, dr rakesh sarwal he is with us right now he is currently the additional secretary in niti ayog uh, our policy think tank can i see thank you yeah and he he is a senior ias officer having doctorate in the public health from johns hopkins university he has served in the social sector in various capacities in uh, tripura and in government of india and as and as a part of the then planning commission he was instrumental in preparing the 12th five year plan i request you uh, dr sarwal sir to deliver the keynote address over thank to you sir thank you very much praveen um, it's a pleasure to be in this gathering where uh, the leading lights of uh, the health sector in india and it's a pleasure to hear um, manoj as well as rajiv uh, so i compliment uh, the national health authority for picking up this very uh, stimulating and a very important topic uh, of uh, using pmjay as a tool for strengthening the public health care system uh, and thanks for inviting me here um, i think uh, the theoretical arguments and the rational Uh, for use of an assurance system and a payment mechanism to make public health care more efficient is unmistakable the logic is that demand side financing will really stimulate quality building um, the the argument is that 25% incentive if it is given to the staff then deliver better quality care the further argument is if 40% is given as in chatisgarh for hospital development fund it will lead to better equity and uniform development of all the public health facilities so i think these are very eminent and very noteworthy um, uh, goals that are proposed to be achieved but unfortunately the reality runs differently in the field and uh, and that is exactly what the earlier speakers have discussed some data on this 58% of the empaneled hospitals under PMJAY are public but the claims paid are only 32% and the pre authorization are 30, 30 34% so there is a 15% differential in the number of hospitals vis-a-vis the claims um, raised and the claims paid uh, the argument is that not many beneficiaries claim that they are PMJAY beneficiaries or the hospitals are also not very keen to raise those claims as has been mentioned earlier now uh, despite um, uh, this logic why is it that it is not working and i think the argument that comes to my mind is the debate between the hospitality versus the clinical care quality our public hospitals will never uh, be able to compete in hospitality indicators uh, the 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 finish uh, the pr uh, and uh, the publicity related uh, um, extension which a private hospital does they are not made to be like that and uh, the benefit that the public hospital has in terms of preventing overcare clinical outcomes those are the things which are not captured those are the things which are not advertised those are the things in which there is a huge information asymmetry so whether you need those surgical interventions or not whether the doctor treated you without them and uh, still got you well will never get into the discourse and will never be an item for the decision of the patient so uh, i think if we are to compete the public hospitals with is the private on their terms we will never win i think we have to change the discourse and uh, 
since uh, the choice lies with the customer, with the beneficiary, ultimately we have to influence the beneficiary through a different discourse. So my purpose is to bring out an alternative discourse, which will bring uh, some reduction in the information asymmetry in favor of the public hospital. So I, I present some points in favor of that, uh, which argue in favor of going to the public facility for a PMJY beneficiary. First, OPD care. No private hospital will give me OPD care under PMJY, while public hospital will always give it. Second, managed care. If our public hospitals list out and panel and outreach all the PMJY beneficiaries in this area and say, we are your guardians, we are your managers for your care, come what may, whether it is accidental, whether it is OPD care, whether it is catastrophic or maternal care, we are there to care for you. And here is a designated doctor who, who is a family doctor, who, who, is a, who is a family doctor who knows your history. Here is your case record, here are your digital records. Please feel safe and secure with us. I think no private hospital will compare with that. Third, outcomes. Uh, public hospitals, uh, certainly because of less of um, incentive for dilatory care would have um, better health outcomes. And that is something that we need to document and then publicize that uh, for less of intervention, you would have better outcomes come to a public hospital. Fourth, extension services. We have all our national programs all under the CMO in the public health setup. So even before a patient needs to come to a hospital, our services, extension services, preventive care services should be able to reach out to them. And in this regard, I think NHA needs to bring out a package of preventive care services, especially for public hospitals, where these services are paid for, uh, they, they can be extended. And in terms of cost benefit, they'll obviously be very, very beneficial for a small amount spent. So ultimately, I think the argument for a managed care, across a continuum of care across the entire spectrum is something that our public hospitals should try for and not just procedures and compete with the private sector. So lastly, I think the distinction, what I'm saying is that the distinction between PMJY and Ayushman Bharat is critical. We are trying to make our public hospitals compete with private hospitals under PMJY, which is only a health assurance scheme. But we have a larger goal. I think our public hospitals are made for Aishman Bharat, which is ensuring universal health care in a comprehensive and a continuum of care. So if we market ourselves and we treat ourselves as the providers, ourselves meaning public sector, as the providers of Aishman Bharat, continuum of care, universal health coverage, I think we have no one to beat. No one will be able to beat us and will be able to achieve the same goals of this topic, which is using PMJY to strengthen the public health setup. Thank you very much. Many thanks, uh, sir, for those excellent inputs. We would certainly like to uh, uh, pass on this message to all the public hospitals that our ultimate goal is uh, to deliver effective continuum of care uh, from cradle to the grave. Uh, now I turn to Sri uh, Vikas Sheel, who is additional secretary and MD of National Health Mission in the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. He is an IS officer uh, uh, in the government of uh, working in the government of India with wide range of experience in public policy related to various social issues such as food security, public distribution, school education, public health and family welfare. He is also a key member of national team which is currently handling the COVID emergency response in India looking also after design, development and implementation of COVIN, the digital COVID vaccination platform. I request Sri Vikas Shield to give his special address. Uh, <clears throat> uh, thank you, Praveen. Uh, and I must thank uh, all the previous speakers for giving very valuable uh, insights. Uh, when I talk here in this forum, I am more here to learn and understand the various perspectives and how we can uh, tailor our responses uh, in terms of uh, utilizing the potential of PMJY uh, or leverage the potential of PMJY to further strengthen our health systems. Uh, some very interesting ideas have also been uh, propounded. We'll, we'll take note of it, we'll work on them. Uh, I believe it's a 
it's not a very simplistic kind of a situation. It, it's a complex interplay of various factors. Um, uh, and there are various stakeholders. Uh, we, we would need to come up with some uh, simple solutions. Uh, and whereas we do understand that uh, the public health systems or the hospitals were never designed uh, to work or function as a corporate entity or a business entity, uh, but uh, and uh, any 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 change perhaps will not be possible overnight in terms of uh, changing the culture and the way in which uh, you know public health uh, institutions uh, function. But we would still need to find ways of improving. Uh, uh, improving uh, our, our systems. And I believe uh, the key would lie in how we design our incentives, uh, both for the institutions, the care providers, for the hospitals, for the people, uh, as, as uh, Jalani sir uh, mentioned that, uh, you know, we could, uh, we could provide the, uh, the same package, uh, the care for the same package at a lesser rate in a public health facility with better outcomes that could act as an incentive for the people. Uh, and as just now suggested by uh, Sarwal sir, I mean, if we could have some sort of, a, and not necessarily under the PMJY, we can even, we can even think of uh, doing this under the NHM, uh, coming up with some packages for preventive care and uh, 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 preventive promotive care, so that uh, <clears throat> uh, the work being done by the health institutions can actually be measured and the incentives could flow to places where uh, the services actually get delivered. Uh, so using NHS platform to work out some sort of a delivery based payment systems to financing uh, uh, public health facilities, at least for those services which are in research under the NHM as a programmatic intervention or, or uh, in general, uh, the general health services. Uh, I would, uh, I have a very small presentation uh, in terms of uh, how, which are the factors that uh, we are current, which are the initiatives that we are currently undertaking. And, uh, you know, I'll just run through this in uh, perhaps in five minutes. I hope the screen is visible. Praveen, can you confirm? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Confirm. Please okay. go ahead. Okay, so this is a uh, this is this is our starting slide in all the presentations. So, the the idea of focusing on uh, 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 SDG three, and within that the target three point eight, uh, for which the PMJY, the Ayushman Bharat package, uh, Ayushman Bharat, as Sarwal sir also pointed out, talks about the whole SDG three, including all aspects of healthcare has two pillars, Ayushman Bharat Health and Wellness Centers and Ayushman Bharat PMJY. PMJY is more towards providing health assurance and social protection. Uh, now, this is, uh, this is how we envisage uh, uh, health and wellness centers interacting with the PMJY. Uh, uh, we, we believe that PMJY normally takes care of the hospital care part, clinical care part aspect of the whole spectrum. Whereas health and wellness centers focus on comprehensive primary health care, preventive care, uh, wellness, and well-being, and uh, there needs to be uh, there need to be bi-directional linkages between the two uh, pillars of the uh, Ayushman Bharat uh, for upward referral, so to say, for clinical care, and for downward referral for uh, follow-up care after discharge from a, a BMJY facility after somebody has availed. Uh, benefit under the PMJY. Now, uh, this is this is how we visualize uh, the umbrella of Ayushman Bharat with uh, you know primary care and secondary care being taken care by the under the NHM uh, through the health and wellness centers, uh, PHCs, CHCs, and district hospitals. We focus on uh, uh, preventive, promotive, uh, rehabilitative, palliative care across a, a comprehensive range of services and uh, the tertiary care and a part of secondary care is taken care of by the PMJY, which has both the public and the private hospitals. Uh, I would not focus more on what is the proportion of claims, what is the proportion of facilities impaneled. I believe we all understand that it needs to improve. 
and we were we have been working with the NHA in terms of trying to make sure that this uh, follow up and referral gatekeeping and follow up does happen so that whosoever gets needs a service going up is referred appropriately and somebody who's taken a service here under the PMJY and needs a follow up checkup which can be done at a primary health center should not have to travel to the same hospital for follow up care and uh, can we set up some sort of an institutional mechanism to facilitate uh, this uh, these bidirectional linkages to ensure a uh, continuum of care now this is something that uh, the, the NHM and the NHA have uh, worked out what we are saying is that uh, uh, we would use the primary health center because that's the that's the first lowest level of institution where we have a medical officer, an MBBS doctor, uh, who can uh, inform the patient in terms of his needs in patient care, then inform all the options. If he and he should have all the information necessary for helping the patient to make a choice in terms of which is the best institution to go to. Uh, our motto generally would be to advise to go to a public health facility for something that we are confident that we can deliver quality services. But those things which uh, for which we do not currently have the capacity, of course, can directly be referred from the PHC level to the PMJY. And similarly, from the PMJY impanel hospitals, uh, people should also be downwardly referred for, uh, for, for follow up care. Uh, how to facilitate this uh, is what we were trying to figure out and then we came with the, with the concept of a Aishman Bharat counseling or facilitation center. Uh, this could be in every uh, district, preferably in the district hospital because uh, the, the chief medical officer and the civil surgeon uh, would have a fair idea uh, in terms of both things, both uh, in terms of referral to uh, PMJY uh, for uh, to appropriate institution for uh, clinical care and for you know downward referral follow up care uh, etc so this could be one institutional mechanism that we are working with uh, with nha uh, we are financing this uh, under the nhm supporting the states that they can set up such facilitation centers which will have the repository of and this we intend to provide the repository of all information related to pmjy and panel hospitals at all the public health facilities because NHA system is uh, technology driven, it, everything is on an IT platform and therefore all our public health facilities can access that information. Uh, but the dis even if, if they're not in a position to access or they don't understand or they would like some guidance or handholding, then the district facilitation center uh, could be the place from where uh, the, the, our facility in charges or the people directly uh, could also avail information in terms of where to go uh, for treatment and uh, where to go for uh, follow-up care. Uh, <clears throat> so the idea is to, through the center, facilitate movement of patients across uh, uh, within the state, across districts, uh, and also interstate if uh, required, uh, especially facilitate downward referral because that linkage is currently completely missing. So anybody who undergoes a cardiac surgery in a tertiary care hospital, more often than not has to go for a follow up checkup uh, in the same hospital, maybe sometime down the line, whereas that follow up checkup can perhaps be done uh, at, a at a lower level center so that the patient or the person doesn't have to travel long distances and that follow up checkup can also be facilitated now through teleconsultations and uh, uh, using technology. So this is something that could really, really uh, bring down expenses for the patients and the, because I believe follow up care is only funded under the PMJY also to a limited extent. It's it's not as if that, uh, okay, we will fund the procedure to the extent of 5 lakh rupees, but if the procedure itself is 5 lakh rupees, then follow up care is not financed. In that case, I think you need to find such solutions to uh, keep the keep the expenses low and and uh, facilitate access uh, and and now that we are developing our health and wellness centers uh, a whole lot of uh, 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 trained hr is available for at least providing the 
the basic follow-up services and uh, consultation and all these centers do have teleconsultation facilities and therefore they can always be used as an extension center for a certain private hospital which is impaneled and uh, can uh, that private hospital can also choose to provide some uh, some some follow-up services through uh, our, our uh, institutions uh, these uh, these centers can also uh, look at the grievances in terms of uh, <clears throat> uh, so for example as was suggested uh, during the previous uh, uh, presentations that uh, at the time when uh, when when we are advising or counseling a person to choose from whether he wants to go to a private hospital or a public hospital that time the facilitation center can gather all this information in terms of why uh, a person still prefers uh, to go to a private hospital, even if uh, the package rate is a bit higher in the private hospital uh, and things like that. And that could provide us uh, useful feedback. Uh, plus also I mean, those who are facilitated, whether they actually get those services uh, or is there any problem? So that grievance addressal uh, system is also envisaged under this uh, facilitation mechanism these are some of the parameters that we have decided that we will monitor the uh, the the counseling or the facilitation facilitation centers on uh, i i would just say that uh, there, there are uh, the, there is the, there's a, there's a huge opportunity uh, given that we have the uh, the the pmjy and the health and wellness center these being two uh, flagship uh, interventions or programs of the government uh, uh, Apart from setting up these linkages, I think a whole lot of suggestions have come wherein uh, we need to work with the team in the NHA and uh, come up with uh, strategies uh, such as you know reforming or simplifying the guidelines for utilization of funds which are received in the hospitals through PMJY. There's already a mechanism in the in most of the public health facilities at least up to the district level where we give untied funds and the Rubi Kalyan Samitis are authorized to use those funds. Uh, so if simple convergence mechanisms could be worked out, I believe that resource will be available to the hospital, at least to the extent that they have the autonomy to use those funds, that autonomy and that system can immediately be leveraged uh, to start to, to enable the RKS to utilize that money for, uh, for improving the hospitals. But uh, I think we would need to uh, address some of the fundamental issues uh, in terms of uh, how to how to motivate our hospitals and hospital managers, administrators to uh, take up more and more responsibility in terms of providing inpatient care and increase the share of claims, etc. And, and we can design systems as has been suggested to to also save money for the patient because uh, if if the claim amount is going to be the same in the public facility and a private facility as was pointed out since the private facility appears more beautiful more friendly and uh, you know uh, though i i think that the extent of hospitality depends on the customer it is for people who can't afford and perhaps for the PMJY eligible beneficiaries, I don't think that the kind of hospitality that, hospitality that is extended to uh, people who are paying out of pocket is uh, is actually extended to the PMJY beneficiaries. Uh, 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 so, so we would need to uh, work on this. And I think uh, the idea of designing incentives and starting, uh, you know, financing our facilities uh, at least for the programmatic interventions based on service delivery rather than financing the inputs is the way to go. And we would be very happy to utilize the technology platform developed by the NHA for doing so. So that's about it. And, you know, we've got a lot of suggestions and uh, we look forward to working together with, uh, with all to, to improve these things. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sri Vikas Shil, sir. Uh, NHA look forward to work with you in this area of continuum of care to ensure proper referral and follow-up. After uh, hearing all these eminent panelists about PMJY, we are now going to a speaker who himself is a very eminent doctor and also an administrator of one of the most prominent healthcare institution in India. I welcome Dr. Jagatram, Director 
PGI Chandigarh. Professor Jagatram is an ophthalmologist par excellence, eminent teacher and an inspirational leader. He has risen from a very humble rural background to reach the pinnacle of his career uh, and ultimately getting uh, Padma Shri for his outstanding service in the field of ophthalmology. I request uh, Professor Dr. Jagatram, doctor and a hospital administrator to share his views and perspectives about implementation of PMJY in a large public hospital. Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Shri Moj, uh, Manoj Jalani ji, Director, Health System Development and Chair chairperson of this session, Shri Rajiv Sadanandan, CEO, HSTP, uh, Dr. Rakesh Sarwal, Additional Secretary Niti Ayog, Shri Vikas Shil, ASMD, National Health Mission, Dr. Parveen Gedam, National Health Mission, and uh, we have with us uh, from PGIE, Dr. Navneet Daliwal, Associate Professor, Department of Hospital Ad Administration, PGIE. First of all, uh, I am thankful uh, for inviting me to participate in Aryogya Manthan 30, uh, strengthening the public health care, leveraging Ayushman Bharat PMJ. Uh, Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Aryogya Yojana. Uh, which was launched by our Honorable Prime Minister in September 2018, has enhanced the health insurance cover in implementing state as per economic survey 2020-21. The two components of the scheme, Health and Wellness Center and Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana, are uh, working in tandem to enable to achieve universal health coverage. PMJ provides health assurance through the insurance cover for secondary and tertiary care hospitalization to about uh, 500 million of India's uh, poor and the poorest household in public and private impaneled providers. The convergence of the state-specific schemes under the Aishman Bharat PMJ has also added to the pool of beneficiary. Our institution, PJMER Chandigarh, which is a national institute of excellence, a tertiary care hospital and a research center, cater to large number of patients. The indoor uh, uh, footfall for the year 2019 was more than one lakh patient and uh, in the hospital as well as a uh, uh, similar number in the emergency section. Uh, but this number has uh, shown some decrease, uh, particularly the indoor patient, uh, but uh, number in the emergency remained almost same. Aishman Bharat. Uh, uh, Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana was implemented in PGIMER Chandigarh uh, in October 2018. Since then, 26,250 Aishman beneficiary, uh, these include the admission and uh, also the daycare beneficiary, have been treated till date. Uh, the introduction of the health benefit package to many new treatment procedure has been added. This Yojana has eased the access to secondary and tertiary care for the beneficiary by offering cashless admission, treatment and discharge along with facilitating claim management for the healthcare organization. Earlier, the same patient had to think twice before availing the treatment in the secondary and tertiary care hospitals as it involved uh, out-of-pocket expenditure and family would uh, get trapped in vicious cycle of debt. Some of the beneficiaries 
have been able to avail treatment of ailment requiring expenditure of even up to 5 lakh under the unspecified category there there are many of the issues as the number of the families covered under ayushman bharat pmj increases the public health facilities would require to be revamped so so that not only the institution and hospital which are performing well are not overburdened but the health care becomes accessible to all and at par with the private health care providers this would require better infrastructure adding latest medical technology imparting knowledge and skill training to the health care providers and improving the process and services the logistic and the supply chain management system will require to be strengthened the capacity building and empowerment of the ayushman mitra must be done as they play a major role in enabling the services the system a strengthening measure can be planned by utilizing some of the fund which are available from the claim money received by the hospitals the data analytics can be used to determine the best performing and poorly performing public sector hospital through the enormous data pool available the respective state and the region may be asked to uh, do the root cause analysis of the poor performing hospital and uh, propose plan for improving their services the state health agencies can do hand holding and share the progress of these hospital and recognize their efforts coordination among the public sector hospital has to be encouraged public sector hospital in the vicinity can focus on excelling in one or two specialties each and cross refer patient thus providing quality care and accessibility while ensuring optimal utilization of the health care facilities more so in geographically challenging area where the private players are very few uniform quality indicator at the state and regional level which summarizes the quality status detect gaps and differences and prioritize action can be created through quality cell once the culture of quality becomes inherent in the system the acceptability of the public sector hospital will take a huge leap forward program like kaya kalap are a step forward improving the quality of the health care in public sector hospitals in yesterday's inaugural session the names of the top performing states and uts were shared the success stories of these states must be analyzed standardized and replicated in the areas lagging behind recognition of the efforts to improve at the level at the state and national level will further motivate the caregivers ayushman bharat pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana is an unique opportunity to strengthen our healthcare system and set india on a path of a universal health coverage and we must utilize it from the perspective of the patient care uh, there are packages and treatments which need to be considered for inclusion spe uh, specifically for tertiary care treatment uh, immunoglobulins and uh, amino modulating drugs are very frequently uh, required for the treatment protocol for neurology 
मेडिसन डॉमेटोलॉजी पीडियाट्रिक एलर्जी इम्यूनोलॉजी एंड ऑल्सो द आई वी इम्यूनोग्लोबलिन इंट्रोडक्शन सिमिलरली द न्यूक्लियर मेडिसन प्रोसीजर एज वेल एज द अदर सर्जिकल प्रोसीजर सच एज रोबोटिक सर्जरी ऑल दो दिस रोबोटिक सर्जरी मे बी मच मोर कॉस्टलियर बट देन एंड अदर सच एज कॉकलियर इम्प्लांट कैन बी कंसिडर्ड फॉर इंक्लूजन इन द पैकेजेस एंड वी मस्ट ऑल्सो स्ट्रेंथ द आई टी so that the speed as well as uh, time is saved while uh, while analyzing and while uh, doing the job for the patient care uh, with this thank you very much uh, these were some of the views uh, because a lot has been expressed by uh, my previous speakers and it was also a learning for me thank you very much thank you very much uh, dr jagatram uh, i now uh, we still have 10 minutes to go and i now uh, therefore request uh, uh, shri jhalani sir to take over the session uh, for concluding with uh, his and other panelists remark over to you sir uh, thanks thanks praveen i think we have really over short time and we just have less than 10 minutes to go so i'll just have one common question to all my colleagues i mean we provided the whole gamut of uh, recommendations etc but i'll just ask what are your top two recommendations what are your top two recommendations for the government for the nha sha to improve support for the public hospitals i'll start in the same order i'll request first uh, rajiv sir to first respond over to you rajiv sir thank you uh, manoj i think uh, uh, one of the things that all of us agreed is that Uh, hospital managers as they stand now are not trained for this function and i think initially the first thing we have to do is and remember a hospital manager who takes his decisions is still a public servant and is subject to all the threats that the public servants are uh, subject to in terms of audit etc etc so we have a difficult task of designing processes that will facilitate good decision but also protect them so that is not something that we can leave to uh, managers and secondly once these are developed i would recommend that we try to develop a cadre of uh, you know uh, hospital managers with the new function in place but from from being clinicians they are moving on to becoming hospital managers at which uh, professor jagadram will agree is a different cup of tea altogether and i think we need to invest in in in, in building that kind of a capacity thank you much Th thank you rajiv sir uh, may i now request vikas to please respond to the same question yes sir my top two uh, are not from the point of view of the ideal top two but from the point of view of what we can immediately do or do in the short run or you know do it do it in a reasonably short span of time uh, the first one would be to 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 set up the facilitation and counseling centers so that uh, 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 we can facilitate access both to pmjay and to our systems for the pmjay beneficiaries that should also help us going forward uh, uh, doing advocacy with these uh, beneficiaries about uh, services already available in public health facilities many a time people may be accessing a private private hospital because they are not aware that the same uh, services available in the district hospital or another sub district hospital so that would be first the second would be to to work with the nha and uh, come up with clear guidelines uh, uh, about utilization of the claims funds by the rogi kalyan samitis in the hospitals which are uh, utilizing the existing mechanism rather than setting up anything uh, parallel or uh, over over and above that and also work uh, as a part of that guideline also try and see how we can uh, uh, we can work out an equalization fund at the state level uh, to to strengthen those hospitals which are uh, which are lesser endowed and uh, would definitely will have challenges to come to come up to a level where they can meaningfully start participating in pmjay so some sort of a cross subsidized uh, cross subsidization mechanism uh, in terms of uh, helping those hospitals also to 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 come up uh, in terms of uh, 
capacities. Uh, thanks, Vikas. Uh, Professor Jagat, on top two recommendations to improve uh, support for public hospitals. Over to you, Professor Jagat Ram. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, uh, one, one, uh, one important thing is uh, capacity building by enhancing the knowledge and skill of the healthcare providers and also improving the communication. Sometimes uh, there may be also communication gaps and uh, improving the quality care provided by introducing uh, quality care parameters. Uh, I think this will also help because uh, after all, I think quality is uh, most important thing in either medical or surgical specialties uh, for the patient care. So I feel that these two are important beside other which I have said earlier, uh, some of the uncovered area which may be slowly steadily uh, added to the added to the domain. Thank you so much. Uh Thank you, Professor Jagat. Uh, I think I'll also put in my top two recommendations for the NHA, SHA, NHM government. If you, to if you permit just one small point. Uh, yeah, yeah, please, Vikas. <coughs> yeah, so, you know, the, the question of uh, building confidence of people in public health facilities, uh, uh, the, uh, in terms of how to aspire that confidence among people, now we have this uh, intervention called the National Quality Assur uh, Assurance Standards. Uh, under which we certify these facilities. Uh, so we had requested the NHA to actually recognize it as uh, NABH equivalent. Uh, once that is done, I think it will help us in, do, in, in doing this outreach and uh, publicity that this is an NABH accredited hospital and provides the same quality of services as in any other good private hospital. So that should also act as a confidence uh, building uh, kind of a recognition so if that could be that will work with the nha to try and uh, get it through uh, uh, yeah. okay uh, thanks thanks vikas i mean i'll also i mean i could speak on behalf of nha here to the best of my knowledge and uh, when i was there itself this part has already been done so the nqa certified hospitals are to receive slightly higher uh, package rates uh, then the other rates. I mean, so on the same pattern as the QCI NABH. Uh, Praveen may confirm that, but uh, I remember when Hindu Bhushan Sahib was there and I was there in the ministry, we had taken it up and he had agreed and uh, he had communicated that that's been done. So anyways, and also the money, I mean, to the best of my knowledge, flows to the RKS only because uh, the PMJY money flows to the RKS and RKS were expected to be having the flexibility in states like Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, they are... Uh, having the flexibility, they use that flexibility, it works well, but uh, there are states where this is a challenge, say UP and Bihar, etc. Anyway, um, from my side, I'll just say my top two recommendations would be uh, conducting a survey to a certain reasons of why patients choose a particular facility, uh, particularly in districts where you have both the public and private sector facilities available. So where there's a matter of choice, what is the factors that are guiding them? Let's be guided by purely by the evidence. Uh, and if nothing else, the tele-survey could be done without much cost, and we could have a rich data to guide our next action. Uh, the second one would be in terms of organizing a good systematic quality workshop with the superintendents of the hospitals, the best performing hospitals, the poorly performing hospitals, making them sit together and then uh, understanding what is it that needs to be done from the supply side so that uh, we will get good insights in terms of what needs to be done. Uh, to enable them to be uh, better performing. Uh, I think now we're almost, uh, we've already touched 358. That's the time for me. Uh, so we all uh, acknowledge and recognize the importance of strengthening public hospitals. Uh, I must thank uh, the NHA for facilitating and organizing such an enriching discussion. I, I really was very um, enlightened and impressed and it was educative and, um, for me uh, for all these um, uh, very rich uh, quality of uh, discussion and i expect the nha and sha uh, and the nhm to carry forward i mean so whatever the recommendations have been received uh, in this conference to examine them and uh, take them uh, to their logical conclusion thank you so much over to you praveen
thank you so much sir and to all the panelists uh, we have noted all your all of your suggestions and i assure you that we will all examine them critically and as much as possible we will try to implement them so that ultimately the implementation of pmjy particularly in public hospitals improve for the better healthcare provision for the society uh, i thank uh, all the panelists and everybody in the audience for joining us for this discussion today uh, thank you very much thank you thank you thank you thank you everyone thank you. bye bye stay safe okay thank you